Uh, first of all, there are a lot, there's a lot of mythology about foods, and, and some of it's wrong. And when I say myth, I'm referring to urban legends. So that's a bit of a teaser. Um, most people, most women, have heard that soy should be avoided because it's dangerous. So eating soy can uh, increase your risk for breast cancer. That is a common uh, uh, thought, but it's completely false. It is an urban legend. Research actually shows that those women who are at highest risk, including women who have breast cancer, the more soy they eat, the lower their chances of death. And so that's an example of an eye-opening uh, fact that science brings to the table about soy. Uh, here's another one. Many people have heard that tomatoes should be avoided because they're a member of the nightshade family, which is poisonous, and that uh, tomatoes contain a deadly toxin called uh, lectins that should be avoided and it causes inflammation in the body. Well, that's also completely wrong. There are thousands of lectins out there. Tomatoes happen to have some of the non-toxic ones. Um, and in fact, the studies of tomatoes have actually shown in more than 30,000 people that those men who eat just two to three servings of cooked tomatoes a week have a 30% lower risk of developing prostate cancer. And so again, two examples of common foods that are surrounded by urban modern mythology that science cuts through like a hot knife through butter in order to reveal what the true health benefits could be. Some amazing research has been done uh, uh, looking at which foods can help protect our DNA. And, and some of them are, are very ordinary, like the uh, a, a kiwi fruit that you might eat at breakfast. You know, that brown fuzzy ball, you cut it open, it's got this emerald green uh, interior with a little white starburst. You know, it's kind of um, tart and sweet at the same time. Well, that uh, kiwi is packed with vitamins and antioxidants. And it's been shown that eating just one kiwi a day can actually uh, protect your, cause your blood to be fortified to neutralize about 60% of the incoming damage from DNA. And if you eat three kiwis a day, okay, which is pretty easy, right? I mean, you peel it, you cut it up, you put it into a yogurt, okay? It's something that simple uh, uh, actually will build, help your DNA build itself back up so that damaged DNA will be repaired. So don't don't forget, like, think about the way of protecting your DNA. Um, I remember an old video game called Missile Command. And this is where, from the top of the screen, there are all these missiles that are descending down on your planet. And what you had to do is to be able to you know, you know, fire and, and try to neutralize all the missiles. And that's what antioxidants actually do. But it's really hard to prevent all the missiles from coming in. And so occasionally you actually have one that, create, that gets through the shields and creates a crater. That's damage. And so neutralizing the incoming is like antioxidants, but building back the damaged DNA. Well, that's important too, because that's like patching a pothole in the highway, in the roadside, so that you, so other cars don't have a problem on it. And, and so here's a, an example of a food, a kiwi, that can actually do that. But there are other foods that can also have varying degrees of protection of your DNA as well. It's green tea. Um, uh, but black tea actually also has um, different benefits uh, as well. So um, a study out of Italy did something really amazing. Well, so look, let's back up for a second. So <clears throat> what everybody would recognize is green tea. It's kind of like jet, kind of tea that you get in a sushi restaurant, Japanese restaurant, you know, uh, matcha. And it's very trendy. And, and of course, the trend goes back thousands of years in, in Asia. Um, uh, and then there's black tea. Uh, classic English breakfast tea or Earl Grey tea. In fact, I have a little tin of it. I happen to have a tin, tin of Earl Grey tea here, right right here. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I, I love tea. And most people have said, <clears throat> this was the thinking previously, that green tea is really great for you because it's green. It's got filled with antioxidants um, uh, and it's got all these polyphenols in it. And black tea, well, you know, when the British brought it back from Asia, they couldn't actually bring fresh green tea and with this long ocean voyage, so they fermented, dried it. And that drying and fermenting actually destroys those polyphenols. So it doesn't have much good, like might taste good, but it doesn't really have the healthful properties. Well, this is where science, again, you know, is able to heat up that knife and cut through the, the, the butter to kind of see exactly what the story is. And it turns out that black tea actually is quite 
active. I studied uh, Chinese green tea, Japanese green tea, and and studied、um, Earl Grey. And we can, and so you can. Besides comparing foods with drugs, you can compare foods with foods to find out which is the best kind. I was interested in is Japanese sencha or Chinese green tea, jasmine tea, or is、um, Earl Grey. Which one is better when you throw them into the system? And we found actually surprisingly that Earl Grey, the black tea flavored bergamot, actually was the most potent tea when you combined all when you looked at all three side by side. Other thing about black tea that's really amazing that's been studied by researchers in Italy is that black tea actually can call out those stem cells from your bone marrow、uh, to increase their levels in your circulation. And when your stem cells are circulating in your blood,、uh, they come out of their hiding spots in your their storage、uh, container, their, the the garage that the paint, can, paint cans were stored in. They come out like bees flying out of a hive. And then they cir- circulate in your body, looking for organs to repair. So wherever you need a little bit of renewal, regeneration, your stem cells will fix it invisibly.、Yeah. And so black tea can actually spark that repair and regenerative process. By the way, if you didn't want to、uh, look at olive oil, here's another common snack in, in the United States. Anyways, kind of tearing a page book from Latin American cuisine, you have these tortilla chips, and then you wind up actually having a salsa and guacamole. The salsa, salsa is often sort of stewed down tomatoes,、uh, cooked down tomatoes, served at room temperature or chilled, and then the guacamole is just avocado that's been smashed up. Now, avocado has a lot of healthy fats in it.、Uh, it's, it's, it's a fat soluble veggie. It's actually quite Uh, nutritious and remarkably,、uh, people eating avocado actually shrink their waistline because actually, it, even though they're eating fat, it actually makes you it burns down the harmful fat. It's a whole other story that we had. But if you have guacamole, avocado with tomatoes, you get more lycopene, and so that happens to be kind of a popular snack、uh, in、yeah. the United States. Yeah, I love that. So the right combination of foods can actually. Help absorb the nutrients. I think black pepper also can do that, right? With certain nutrients. Well, right. So black pepper is. So this is an interesting thing. Well, right. So black pepper is. So this is an interesting thing. We most of us have heard that turmeric, which is a kind of a, a root,、um, when you cut it open, it's this bright, beautiful, bright orange, a lovely color. And and turmeric is also a dried spice used in Southeast Asian cuisine. Uh, including Indian cuisine is where I first became acquainted with it. It、um, uh, not only makes food beautiful, it actually makes food delicious. It's got a quite a, a lovely taste to it. It's a it's a spice. Inside turmeric is curcumin. Curcumin is one of those natural chemicals, kind of like lycopene. It's one of those Mother Nature's treasure chest. Mother Nature's pharmacy with an F, not a PH. And the 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 the, the curcumin has a lot of properties: anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, it cuts off the blood supply, feeding cancers.、Um, it uh, uh, actually is helpful for your stem cells as well. It's it really activates almost all of your body's health defenses, and it's good for your gut microbiome. So why not just you know enjoy turmeric as a spice by itself because it's so potent that our body. Actually, doesn't absorb everything that it could. In fact, our body kind of,、uh, it kind of gets a lot of it gets flushed out, you know,、uh, at the tail end. And so, what we want to do to improve our body's extraction of the good,、um, the good stuff, the the turmeric. It turns out that if you have fresh cracked black pepper, all right, there's a substance in fresh cracked black pepper called piperine. Piperine、yeah. is one of Mother Nature's、um, uh, again, you know, these remarkable chemicals that actually in- influences the body. And piperine helps the body hang on to the curcumin. So if you have fresh cracked black pepper with your turmeric,、uh, you, you're actually creating a one-two punch that allows you to absorb more of the curcumin. Yeah, I love that. So the right combinations can actually help us get more out of these incredible whole foods. Well, right. So black pepper is. So this is an interesting thing. We most of us have heard that turmeric, which is a kind of a, a root,、um, when you cut it open, it's this bright, beautiful, bright orange, a lovely color. And and turmeric is also a dried spice used in Southeast Asian cuisine. Uh, including Indian cuisine is where I first became acquainted with it. It、um, uh, not only makes food beautiful, it actually makes food delicious. It's got a quite a, a lovely taste to it. It's a it's a spice. Inside turmeric is curcumin. Curcumin is one of those natural chemicals, kind of like lycopene. It's one of those 
Mother Nature's treasure chest, Mother Nature's pharmacy with an F, not a PH. And the 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 the, the curcumin has a lot of properties: anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, it cuts off the blood supply, feeding cancers. Um, it uh, uh, actually is helpful for your stem cells as well. It's it really activates almost all of your body's health defenses, and it's good for your gut microbiome. So why not just you know enjoy turmeric as a spice by itself? Because it's so potent that our body actually doesn't absorb everything that it could. In fact, our body kind of uh, it kind of gets a lot of it gets flushed out, you know, uh, at the tail end. And so, what we want to do to improve our body's extraction of the good, um, the good stuff, the the turmeric. It turns out that if you have fresh cracked black pepper, all right, there's a substance in fresh cracked black pepper called piperine. Yeah. Piperine is one of Mother Nature's. Um, again, you know, these remarkable chemicals that actually in, influences the body. And piperine helps the body hang on to the curcumin. So if you have fresh cracked black pepper with your turmeric, uh, you, you're actually creating a one-two punch that allows you to absorb more of the curcumin. Yeah, I love that. So the right combinations can actually help us get more out of these incredible whole foods. You know, those scientists that do television shows to actually uh, make science accessible to people. This is kind of where we need to go with this this topic. So look, tea, green tea, uh, especially has a natural polyphenol that's called catechins, EGCG, uh, uh, epigallocatechin gallate, uh, EGCG, and the catech and the catechin is actually just part of the natural substance in the tea leaf. So whether you're um, a brewing tea with a bag or whether it's loose leaf tea or whether it's matcha which is just powdered tea leaves um, the fact of the matter is that into the brew into the liquid the hot liquid uh, comes all these phytochemicals including these catechins so when you sip straight tea the catechins go right in they're easily absorbed um, by your body and so you know your our blood levels of catechins go way up so many things that catechins can do one of the things that's important is that actually it's it's a relaxant it actually helps lower your stress it lowers the catecholamines and so uh, other things that helps your lipids it actually also helps fight cancer it's anti-inflammatory kind of like curcumin it's it's a substance that has so many beneficial things that at least when i drink tea i want i want to get as much as i can out of my food all right now i res i deeply respect traditions of yeah, of eating and drinking and one of the things that um you know i know is a tradition in england is you know you put or in ireland you actually put some milk or cream into your tea it actually um, changes the flavor profile not everybody eats oily fish you know day and you know two to three times a week you know you only need to eat um, the amount in each serving with the size of a deck of playing cards so you don't need to eat very much but you know that's not something people most people do people who live on the on the coastline, they might be doing it, but many people don't. Um, so omega-3s are so important to our health. I mean, this has been shown time and time and again. That's a supplement that's that's definitely worth taking. And and, and it's a lot easier to swallow um, omega-3s than it is actually to go to your fishmonger and then to look at what the catch of the day is. That's an example. Another example of a supplement I think is really worth, worth taking um, is probably vitamin D3. Yeah. Okay. Vitamin D, uh, you know, for, for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere, where we don't have as much sun uh, all the time, all year round, and where it's cold, so we're indoors a lot and not always outdoors under the sunshine. So I'm not talking Costa del Sol. I'm not talking about South Africa, you know, or Australia. I'm talking about, you know, England, Northern Europe, North America, you know, and sort of the Northeastern side. Okay. We don't get as much sunlight. And even if we do go outside, because it's cold, we wear a lot of clothes. And so our skin tends to be covered up. And so vitamin D is made by our skin when sunlight actually hits it. And so we don't, we tend to be vitamin D deficient. So here's an example of where you can eat foods like mushrooms that can have vitamin D, for example. Uh, uh, by the way, I don't know if this is a little, little tip, a tidbit for you. I just told you that human skin with ultraviolet radiation from the sun will make more vitamin D. But did you know that if you took just a plain old lowly white button mushroom that contains some vitamin D, if you were to, um, before you eat it, when you buy it, if you slice it, like slice it pretty thinly and you lay the, the slices out and you put it in your windowsill so your sun, the sun shines on the slice, it will make more vitamin D. Wow. You want to you actually convert more vitamin D into the, into the mushroom. So if you're going to prepare something with mushrooms, sl slice them ahead of time stick them in front of a sunny window, no matter what time of the year it is, you know, um, 
maybe a couple hours before you um, cook with it. And the mushrooms will actually give you more vitamin D. But it's it's not it's a lot easier to get your regular dose of daily vitamin D um, by actually just having D3 supplements. And so that's an example. I want to support and underscore what you just said. You know that I, I you know there's there's always something valuable to look at the history of things. Supplementation um, did wasn't developed to be an online internet scam okay supplementation was a really serious effort to improve global nutrition yeah because you know back in even the early 20th century most of the world was undernourished that's different than malnutrition i mean maybe there was some malnutrition too but undernutrition and undernourished means that you know we were eating food but we weren't eating enough of the right things at the right time and so one of the things that supplements were developed for to do is to really fortify supplement top off uh, you know um, uh, everyone so that everyone could have a more equal chance of being uh, of filling up being coming replete with the key micronutrients that we our body needs to actually survive and so i think it's a mistake to disparage supplements as a category i mean this is the theme of what we're talking about today yeah let's not you know let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater. let's not character assassinate entire categories of things let's be i mean let's let's be discerning and try to know exactly what we're talking about there are some dietary supplements that are absolutely valuable some that uh, uh, that's research has actually shown, proven to be helpful, and some that are can be life-saving uh, as well. Pregnant moms really need to be taking folate. You know, if you don't have those, um, you'll have neural tube defects in your babies. The, the, the risks go much higher. So you really want to be able to actually take yeah. the evidence. And so this is the other thing I think maybe a useful um, coat hook or hat hook to hang for your listeners is that supplements are the real deal because they were once designed originally designed to help the body top off with what it actually needs. But if the marketing, and we're back to marketing now, sounds too good to be true, if the claims sound like they're just magical claims, that's when your um, that's when your spidey sense, your radar needs to go on that, you know, maybe, maybe there's something not quite uh, fully honest about what is being told about this, and it's being misrepresented. And so I think that Every consumer needs to be able to, I mean, again, this is where I come back to, we all have mobile devices. We can easily search something. When in doubt, look it up, yeah. check it out, and then make your own decision if that if that fits your, if it fits your comfort zone. I got tea on one end and coffee in the other. Coffee, by the way, contains chlorogenic acid. Chlorogenic acid is a natural kind of insecticide that the coffee plant makes. And so, by the way, that's something we didn't get a chance to talk about is what research is really revealing about how we grow our plants. Turns out that the nibbles that insects do on plants, on the leaves and stems, are perceived by the mother plant as a wound. So the response to wound healing with these little nibbles that insects make is that the plant pumps out more bioactives like chlorogenic acids. So the organic coffee bean actually has more chlorogenic acid than a conventionally grown one yeah. because the one that's conventionally grown has all these pesticides. Now you don't have as many nibbles. And so it's not only that you have less of the pesticides, less chemicals, but you've got more of the good stuff, which is a good thing. So coffee, I love, I love coffee. I love tea. Um, uh, 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 I like, you know, um, among leafy green vegetables, which we all know are good for us. Um, I like Swiss chard. Um, uh, I like some forms of kale, dinosaur kale. I, I, I like to cook too. Yeah, you know, dinosaur kale, most people don't realize that's kind of this, it's got this funny pattern that looks like dinosaur skin, which is why it's darker green. Um, that's the kind of kale that is used to make minestrone soup. So you can actually cook with it and it and you and you blend it into the background and you get this wonderful dietary fiber in it. Mushrooms, I love mushrooms, all kinds of mushrooms. You know, white button, the lowly white button mushroom packed with a soluble fiber called beta D glucan, which boosts your immunity, yeah. starves cancer. Most people um, who get button mushrooms eat the cap. The stem actually has got twice as much of the good stuff, so don't throw the stems away. Save those stems, um, uh, make it into a soup, uh, cut it up to a salad, stir fry it. There's all kinds of ways you can actually use the whole plant. Um, I like uh, dried mushrooms as well, like porcini mushrooms, uh, which you can buy in a specialty store or order it online amazing flavor for a stew or for uh, uh or risotto anything else you want to make or a pasta um i love mushrooms um spices and herbs i like all kinds of spices yeah. and herbs 
uh, rosemary, basil, uh, uh, turmeric, cinnamon, uh, all of those types of spices. I love the flavors. They make your food taste a lot better.